yo yo people welcome back to runs tech hub and today i'm going to show you guys exactly what you need to do every time you get a new gaming laptop now this will work for most laptops it doesn't have to be a gaming one but this is more so tailored for gaming laptops let's go step one you want to do all your windows updates now i recommend this first simply because in the past i've done my windows updates after i've deleted some apps from microsoft for example and after the windows updates i see the apps on there again so i recommend doing the windows update first and then you can clear all the apps you don't want so to get to your windows updates you can click on the start menu and you can type settings you, you can go through settings and then at the very bottom it says windows update click on that and from here simply download everything here normally at the very top it says download and install but because i have one pending it's saying restart so i'm going to download and install that one and and additionally if you go to advanced options you click on advanced options it's going to take you through to this section here optional updates are also a thing that you might want to turn on so i'm going to click on optional updates here and i'm going to go ahead and tick both of these and then click on download and install wait for all this to finish then restart and you're good to go sometimes you also have to get updates from the laptop manufacturer directly so for example i have a legion 5 so not every update for this laptop will come through windows update if you have a dell it's going to be dell update if you have an hp it might be hp update but whatever the app is that came with your laptop you go to that app you look for updates that way as well so for example i know my app is called vantage so i'm going to press the start menu here i'm going to type v a N T A G E Vantage. It comes up with the Legion Vantage app. I'm going to click on that. And from here, I go directly to system update. So I'm going to click on system update here and then do check for updates. Now, this is going to check for more specific stuff to this laptop, whereas Windows Update just checks for general Windows stuff. And sometimes you might get driver updates as well. But this will do a better in depth check. And as you can see, I've got two updates here. I've got an NVIDIA driver and I have a Dolby Vision update. So if I were you, if you wanted to keep these things, the NVIDIA driver, you should definitely update that. I would update mine manually, but if you don't know how to do it manually, this is a good way to do it as well. The Dolby Vision one, again, if this is something that you want to install on your system, I would click on that as well and do install now. So that's how you do system updates via Windows and system updates via the app that came with the laptop. Next, I would say you should remove bloatware. And I left this one after Windows updates and after updates in general, because again, as I said, sometimes I find that I've removed an app from Windows, for example, and then I do an update and the app is back on there again. I have to remove it again. I would highly recommend doing as many updates as possible for windows then you remove the apps you don't want so to do this i'm going to go to my start menu again and i'm going to type add or this is for windows 11 this should work for windows 10 as well and i'm going to go to add or remove programs i'm going to click on that this is where you'll find all the apps and programs installed on this laptop so let me just look for something i know i don't want uh legion arena i have no idea what it is but i know i don't want it so i'm going to click on the dots on the right hand side click on uninstall then click on uninstall here again when this thing pops up i'm going to click on yes i want to uninstall it remove it from my system i'm going to click on uninstall there i know that was uninstalled fine okay perfect i know i also don't want um, nvidia control panel not something i need again click on the dots uninstall uninstall that's gone so some older apps will actually pop up with a, a thing asking if you're sure you want to do this the newer ones typically don't tend to do that they simply they simply have the uninstall button again and you're good to go i don't need a toby experience i believe this is for eye tracking i might be wrong but i don't need this so i'm going to click on the dots again i'm going to click on uninstall see this one asks you if you're sure you want to make changes to your device i'm going to click on yes and it's going to uninstall that's job done so that's how you remove bloatware from your laptop the next thing is to turn off core isolation this will mainly benefit people who want really good performance so they want to squeeze as much out as possible so to do this again i go to start menu and i'm going to type in core isolation comes up straight away so it says core isolation there i'm going to click on it and you want to turn this off you don't really need this so i'm going to turn this off when the window pops up do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device i'm going to click yes and that's it we're done the next step which i think every single person who has a laptop should do this because again it will extend the battery life of your laptop which will just make it cheaper and easier for you to run long term this is going to be limiting battery charge so i have a lenovo legion 5 i have a dell xps 15 as well sometimes you can do this through bios and sometimes you can do it through software for example the dell software is called dell power edge or something along those lines and again for my legion laptop this is going to be legion vantage well vantage software so v-a-n-t-a-g-e again so this is 
how I do it on a Legion laptop. You have to figure out the specific steps for your laptop. But I'm sure if you just Google limit power or limit charge on and then you name the laptop. So for example, limit charge on XPS 15 2018 and it will tell you exactly how to do it. I'm going to open the Vantage software and then I'm going to go to where it says power. That's where I need to be. I'm going to scroll down until I see conservation mode and it tells you exactly what this does. It's, it, it, it helps extend your battery life. So it doesn't always fully charge it and fully discharge. I'm going to turn that on. Might have to turn this off first. There we go. Turn that on. And the function is useful to extend the lifespan of your battery when plugged. When this mode is enabled, the battery will only be charged to 75 to 80% of capacity and the battery lifespan can be maximized. However, this will shorten the time you use your computer after it is disconnected from the AC power source. Meaning I use this laptop as a desktop replacement. So it's always plugged in, always has a dock, always on a cooling fan. So I don't really need to worry about this. If you're someone who needs who needs to take the laptop away from the charger quite a bit you might want to make sure it charges up to 100 percent. but for me 75 to 80 is even more than enough for me the next thing is to turn optimus on now it's not called optimus for every single laptop but is essentially what this should do you want your laptop to be as efficient as possible depending on the task you're doing so if you're just doing some normal windows apps some browsing on the internet you wanted to use the intel graphics card which is typically much lower powered than the nvidia graphics card so for me i have an intel chip and i have an nvidia graphics card so when i'm doing basic things like just browsing around it uses the intel chip when i move over to um, video editing or gaming it should jump onto the nvidia chip so to turn this on turn this feature on i'm going to go back to my vantage software and again every laptop is going to be slightly different but if you google how to switch between uh, these graphics cards dynamically you should be able to find it so i'm going to go to vantage i'm going to click on the vantage software here and i'm going to go over to where it says gpu working mode i'm going to click on that mine is already on hybrid so it's either called hybrid mode or optimus or whatever it's called mine is hybrid mode and it will switch automatically between the intel chip when doing very low powered stuff and the nvidia chip when doing more demanding stuff then click save and you're good to go if you're someone like me who changes computers often or who wipes the computer very often or just does a lot of changes you're gonna want to install this app called chocolately software so it's a package manager and what that is it's a single place where you can get all the apps or most of the apps that you would generally use so i'm going to show you how to download this show you how to set it up and show you how to use it so step one you go to bing or google or wherever and you type in chocolately so just pause the video look at the name i'll put the link in the description as well it's called chocolately once you find it on the main google page or the main bing page it says install so i'm going to click on install here and it's going to give me the steps i need to follow to install this this might seem very complicated at first but just bear with me it's going to be very easy to follow along so step one says we need to run this thing here so we can check if we have permissions to do this all you have to do is press the start menu and type in powershell p-o-w-e-r-s-h powershell is going to come up as the first option you need to right click on powershell run as administrator i'm going to click on that the windows thing is going to pop up do you sure you want to allow this app to make changes to your device i'm going to click on yes it is perfectly okay to click on yes let me zoom in as much as i can i'm going to go back to the website and from here all you need to do is to copy that's this first thing here it's most likely going to return restricted because it says run this command and if it returns restricted that means if it says restricted then you need to run another command but don't worry i'm going to show you again how i'm going to right click on the first one and do copy go back to my uh, powershell and to paste this you right click just to paste it you don't need to do anything else right click on your mouse and it will paste it then press enter and as you can see on mine it says restricted so let's go back to the website again and on here it says if it returns restricted then run set execution policy all signed off or we have two things that we can do so let's try this first one here it says copy this right click highlight copy go back to powershell i'm going to paste it and i'm going to press enter i'm going to say yes or well it says y for yes yes to all i'm just going to say yes for now that's fine so i'm going to run the first First command again which is the get execution policy to do this you can press up on your keyboard twice so if you press it once if you press up once it, it brings up the most recent command that you put in if you press up again it's going to bring up the one just before that so i'm going to press enter now mine says all assigned right sorry about that that was a mistake mine says all assigned so now i can go back to the website and then step two says i need to basically just paste this in if i just copy this don't worry about what it says here if you just click on the copy icon at the very right hand side click on that it's going to say copied paste 
paste this text into your shell and press enter. So same as before, go back to PowerShell, right click to paste. Actually, let me clear this first. I'll make it a bit easier to see. So let's clear that. Don't worry about how I cleared it. Just right click to paste. I'm going to press enter and it's going to do its thing. Installing. Okay. It's doing its thing. I don't know what's going on, but don't worry. It is safe. Everyone else is using it. It's fine. So now everything is installed. Let me go back to the website again. And it says to start this, I need to run Choco, C-H-O-C-O. -O. So I'm going to copy this because I'm lazy. Go back to PowerShell. Let me clear this again. And I'm just going to right click to paste it and press enter. And is that working? Um, yeah, everything seems to be fine. Chocolately two version 2.4.1. Because I know that not everyone is going to be comfortable putting in commands and working from the command line. What I suggest most people do is to install the Chocolately graphical user interface, also known as a GUI. So I'll put this link in the description as well. And all you need to do is copy this section here, put that into the command line again. So I'm going to copy this, go back to PowerShell. And I'm going to right click, then I'm going to press enter. You should go ahead and install that. Everything should be good to go. I'm going to put A for all. Once we've installed Chocolately GUI, we've accepted everything. I'm going to close the PowerShell. I'm going to close that, minimize this, minimize that. And I'm going to open the GUI version of Chocolately. So I'm going to press my start menu and all I need to type in is it's going to be here for most people because it should be the, the, um, the most recently installed thing. But I'm just going to type GUI and it's going to be Chocolately GUI. Click on that. When the pop-up window comes up asking, do you want to allow this app to make changes? I'm going to click yes. And this is it. Once the app is up, you can search for whatever you want from here. And again, the main benefit of this is that I can install multiple apps at the same time, have them all updated. I don't need to go to a website for each app I want, then download the executable or the MSI, then install it and then check for updates manually. This will do everything all in one. Once you open the Chocolately app, you're going to need to go to where it says a Chocolately at the bottom left here. If you click on this PC, it's going to show you exactly what you have installed on your PC at the moment. But because I don't really have anything, I'm going to go to Chocolately and I'm going to type in Chrome. I already tested it before and it worked fine. So C-H-R-O-M-E, I'm going to press enter and it's going to search for every single app that has the word Chrome in it. I'm going to right click on this and choose install. And that should be it. It should just go ahead and install Chrome. The very last thing I would recommend people do is turn off all the startup apps that you don't need. So to do this, press start, type task manager. Once that comes up, click on task manager. It's going to have all of these services running in the background. We don't care about that for now. What we care about, click on this, uh, these three lines here, and it will open up this section here. You need to click on where it says startup apps, click on that. And from here, you can turn on and turn off some things. For example, I don't need phone link turned on. Mine is already disabled, but I'm just giving you an example. I don't need Microsoft Edge running as soon as I start the PC up, so I can disable that. So just click on it to highlight it and click on disable. I probably don't need Xbox running straight away as well. So click on that. And then again, you can click on disable. Mine is already disabled, but you need to click on disable. And that's pretty much it. You're going to have loads of stuff in here after you've installed all your apps. So this is why I recommend first doing your Windows updates, then doing your specific laptop updates, then installing your apps, then doing this process. Because as, as you install apps, it's going to fill this up and then you can come in and turn off the ones that you don't need.